the president of RIPE NCC. Thank you, report. Hola, buenos dias. Uh, voy a hablar en inglés. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not the president of the... <laughs> I would love to, but I'm... <laughs> you just say I will present and... <laughs> but, yeah. Sorry, or maybe I just got promoted, but... Uh, <laughs> but yeah. I'm working as the policy officer for the Vibe NCC, and um, yeah, also from my side, I want to give a big compliment to all the early birds that are here in the room after yesterday's social. And I hope I have some information for you that you might find interesting. First off, um, about our membership growth. Just in the last 12 months, we have seen an overall growth of almost 3,000 new LAR accounts. And I should clarify something here from the beginning. In the RIPE NCC region, um, LAR account doesn't equal member. It is possible in our region that one legal entity has multiple LAR accounts, so the actual membership number is a bit lower, but still it's increasing a lot. And counting all the pending applications, uh, soon we will reach the amount of uh, 19,000 LAR accounts. Why this increases so heavily? Well, uh, we have a soft landing policy and every LAR qualifies for a slash 22 IPv4 and many organizations find us as the only place where they still can get IPv4. So we see a lot of companies now joining us to get something for their own network. And um, that's why our last slash eight, so the one that we got from IANA, was just recently finished about two weeks ago. Luckily, we still have in our pool around 9 million IP addresses, which is uh, returned space uh, from closed LERs, which is uh, other deregistration activities, and also from the IANA recovered pool. So we expect for about two more years that we will be able to hand out IPv4 blocks to LERs. Another important topic, of course, also um, in, like in the Aaron region, transfers. Last year, we saw a peak almost 21 million IP addresses have been transferred, and you can see it's quite a jump to the previous years. So we decided to look a bit closer into this number. And it turns actually out that three quarter of these um, 21 million addresses are related to administrative transfers. So not, let's say, classical transfers, rather some movement of resources between organizations that are rela related, like branches in different countries that move addresses around which leaves about 4.6 million addresses that were transferred on the actual market. And uh, that's actually uh, something that we, where we see a downward trend. So 4.6 million IPs, it's less than in the last years. And that's not so much because there's a decrease in demand, but there's a decrease in offering address space. And um, on the other hand, we see that the amount of transfers, the number of transfers itself, it's increasing because the, the numbers of IPs that are transferred per uh, request is getting smaller. If you're interested in those numbers, uh, my presentation also has a um, link to a very interesting article on our website, Vibe Labs, where we go much more in detail in all those transfer uh, activities that we observe. A little bit more about IPv6. Um, we see less LARs requesting IPv6. The blue line shows a good trend, around 13,000 of our LARs have IPv6 allocation. But since two years, also the amount of LARs without V6 is picking up by right now about 5,000. But that's actually not so such a bad thing because um, two years ago there was a policy change that, that removed the requirement that you need to request V6 before get V4. And we have quite some companies that are not really internet service providers. They just need some IPv4 for the network, so they don't need IPv6 yet, so they don't request it anymore. And also, as I mentioned before, we have some organizations that open multiple LR accounts, and usually they don't request uh, IPv6 allocation for each account. Another activity that we focus more and more on is uh, support for NOGs. Uh, so we see more and more of them pop popping up in our region, uh, latest one like in Norway or in Portugal or in Albania, and we support this. We send, for example, speakers to their events, we do some sponsoring, and um, yeah, we also provide our expertise as such. 
And on top of this, we have three uh, regional, so bigger energies, uh, one for the Middle East, one for um, uh, former Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, and one for the Balkan area. And these we support with uh, uh, administrative support for their meetings and so on. And uh, to extend our support to uh, these energies, we also provide them now in, on our RIPE Labs webpage an extra section, which includes a map with all the energies that we know about worldwide. So if you are representing an energy or if you know one and you don't find it on the map, please let us know and we will be happy to add it. Why we're doing all those things? Because we want to connect the energy participants with the RIPE community because opposite, like for example, to the LACNIC region, where there is LACNIC and LACNOC working together, we don't have an energy that covers our whole service region. And that's why at the upcoming RIPE meeting, for the first time, we will have a full plenary session focused on energies only. A bit about policy proposals. Just two days ago, you had discussions about 10 different proposals. In uh, two weeks, uh, we will discuss in Marseille uh, five proposals. And the first one, uh, it's the called regular ABUC validation. That's now last call. Might sound a bit familiar because you're discussing a similar proposal. This one is more high level. It uh, just gives a mandate to the RIPE NCC uh, to validate annually, and uh, the RIPE NCC will validate technical parameters. So not so much about response time and so on. Then we have another proposal that wants to clarify to whom we actually give IPv6 allocations, because right now it uses the term organization. It is not really well defined. Another proposal that is almost identical, or it's probably identical with a uh, proposal in your region, is a clarification about IPv6 assignments and what is considered sub-assignment and what not. Uh, these two proposals are um, still in the discussion phase, but uh, 2018 or one will be moved very soon to uh, review phase. Two more proposals. One is to update some outdated information from the IPv4 policy. There are references to obsolete RFCs and uh, uh, database statuses I mentioned that don't exist anymore. <laughs> And another one is to clarify a detail in the PDP that is currently not well, well described what to do at the end of the review phase. Internet of Things, just very briefly, because I think I'm running out of time. Um, most interestingly to know, uh, the RIPE community has now an, a working group uh, for Internet of Things uh, that discuss challenges and also opportunities all around IoT. Something that might be Quite interesting for you is for a long time the RIPE database supported the creation of route objects even for um, resources that are not handed out and not administered by the RIPE NCC because back then there were not so many internet route registries. We are going to uh, stop this so quite soon we will not allow the creation of new such route objects that are related to out of, uh, out of region resources and uh, the existing one will get a special status to identify what they are. And eventually also these objects will be removed in the future. That's the depend of the discussion currently ongoing in our database working group. But we will all, we will do the whole process step by step and we will keep all the people affected informed about the progress. Last slide, uh, GDPR, very big topic in uh, Europe and worldwide actually. It's the EU General Data Protection Regulation that is coming in force in a couple of weeks on the 25th of May, which uh, defines, for example, that uh, you cannot store personal data like an ID and so on for uh, longer than a certain period if there's not a good reason for it. So we are still conducting an internal review to make sure that we will uh, fully apply to these uh, regulations. What we have done already, we checked in our RIPE database and this appears to be consistent, so we are quite covered there. Last but not least, in two weeks we will hold our RIPE meeting in beautiful Marseille and there we will discuss all those topics and more. So you're all very welcome and I hope to see you there if not in person, there's always the remote participation uh, possible. Which brings me to the end. Are there any questions? No. Then thank you very much. Thank you, Marco.